Hello and welcome to Rhema Praise. You know, hon, uh, with everything that's going on in the world and even in our own nation, yes. it seems like people are in fear that's right. and people are wondering what is going to happen. And, and, and then it, this is election year. Yes. And you know, uh, we need to pray for our nation. You know, the Word of God says, if the people that are called by my name, that's talking about the that's Christians, right. will humble themselves <laughs> and, and pray, yes. I will hear them and heal, heal their, their land. land. That's right. And so we really need to, people, not just a little prayer, but people need to be prayerful. That's right. With praying for, for our nation. Our, our nation. And then you need to be, you need to pray for your own safety. That's right. I know, uh, Every time we get in the car to drive somewhere, like uh, we went up to Branson here a while back, and I know you you reached over and grabbed my hand and you said, "Yes, you know, do it like." Thank, yes, I said, "Thank you, Father, that we are safe, yeah. that no harm shall come nigh us as we take this journey. We thank you that our angels are surrounding us and we'll be safe until we get there." And on our aircraft, when we fly, we do a 11, 11 crusades in all over the United mm -hmm. States, and then we travel overseas mm -hmm. in our aircraft. And I, with the whole team that's on there, what, 11 of us on there, mm -hmm. we all grab hands, and yes. I pray, and I thank God but for safety. Yes. That that plane is safe yes. from the time it rolls in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to it lands wherever uh, we're landing. Yes, that's and right. That, and that all the systems will operate properly, no malfunctions. That's huh? right. And the pilots will fight at the best of their mm -hmm. ability. And thank God they're Rhema, one of them, they're Rhema people. One yes. of them has gone to Rhema school. Our mechanics that take care of it are Rhema people. They all, we pray over that plane. Yes. And, but it, it helps did. us to take the gospel to the world. That's right. That's what it's used for. That's right. And, and, and you know, prayer, we're talking about prayer. Yes. Prayer is so important. That's right. And, and you know, uh, Actually, honey, I want to talk about, you know, you're talking about the plane. Yeah. Well, it brought me to a scripture. The Lord gave me a scripture as you're traveling, and I yeah. want to give it to you. It's yes. Psalm 121, and it is verse 7 and 8. And it says, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And I know that, you know, as people, because I, I used to have a fear of flying, and the Lord gave me the scripture. He said, I'll bless your going out and your coming in. You know, you're taking off and you're coming you back know, down. It, it, you read it from the old King James, yes. but the new King James, instead of thy, it says your. Yes. It just yes. It changes the word there. That's right. Because it, it's, it's the, that's the old Elizabethan but I have, English. I have told people that, that are afraid of flying. Yes. I said, you claim those scriptures. Yes. You know, uh, as we are here and we're talking about prayer. Yes. I, I, I you know, you, you're involved in prayer quite a bit. And in fact, uh, there's an article online and I would like for, uh, the, they're going to put it up and I would like for you to go yes. read this article, but would you just read the scripture Scriptures. right now, read the scripture. And then we are going to, we're going to, we're going to take a minute and pray for our nation. Yes, you know, over in 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2, um, actually in the uh, King James Version, I want to read just a little part of that. It says, I exhort therefore that first of all, this is why I want to read the King James. It says, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness 
fairness and honesty. And you know, there are many different prayers that we yeah. need to pray for right. our country. Sometimes you need to, to pray the prayer of intercession, sometimes supplication. But then over in the Living Bible, it says, here are my directions. Pray much for others. Plead for God's mercy upon them. Give thanks for all he's going to do for them. Praying this way for kings and for all, all others who are in authority over us are in places of high responsibility so that we can live in peace and quietness, spending our time in godly living and thinking uh, much about the Lord. This is good and pleases God our Savior for He longs for all to be saved and to understand this truth. So I would like for you right now, where you're at right now with me, if you, if you got somebody with you, join hands and you pray. I'm going to pray a prayer here, but you need to pray. Yes. Just don't let me do the praying. You pray also. Right. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great nation that we live in. We know that it was established upon Christian principles. And Father, we pray that as we kneel to pray for yes. this nation, as we come together in prayer for this nation, I thank you that your spirit will move in this land. I thank you for protection. I thank you that you will have your way in the upcoming elections. I thank you that as we pray that the will of God will be accomplished yes. in our land. And exactly what you said in your word, you will heal the land. And we thank you for that now. And we give you glory and praise. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now that's a short prayer, but as you every day spend yes. some time in prayer for your own safety, for your family's safety. I, I pray every day yes. for my all of my my family, my grandsons. In fact, I call their name, each name, yes. and and I, I pray for protection because they're playing ball, they're riding bicycles, they're on teams and in high school, and so I pray for their protection yes. every day. Now, I want to. Uh, let us go, I guess, where right now would be a good time to go, where there is some, some things from the Word of God yes. that we want to get to you. And so we'll be back in just a moment to talk with you some more about some of these things. But now, let's go right now and hear from the Word of God. Now, I want to read Mark 16. Uh, se uh, 17 and uh, here in 18 from the uh, today's English version. I like that. Of course, the, the NIV says, and these signs will accompany those who believe. And in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They'll pick up snakes in with their hands. And when they drink daily poison, it will not hurt them. And they will place their hands on sick people and they'll get well. The King James says these signs shall follow them and basically the same thing. But I like the way it says it here in the day's, today's English version. Believers will be given, be given the power to perform miracles. They will drive out demons in my name. That's Jesus talking, okay? They will speak in strange tongues. They, If they pick up snakes or drink any poison. They will not be harmed. They will place their hands on sick people and these will get well. I want you to notice here that Jesus said those who believe. So just anybody can't just start saying in the name of Jesus. Hello. Remember in Acts the seven sons of Sceva, they went out there, they, they, they tried to cast out a devil in, uh, in Jesus' name, said Jesus, the Jesus that Paul preaches. And remember the demon said, hey, Paul, uh, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? <laughs> See, when you become born again by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a citizenship in heaven and they know who you are in heaven on the earth here we know each other and in hell they know who we are because 
Jesus won the authority over them when he died on the cross of Calvary and rose again and seated himself at the right hand of the Father. He defeated them all, and because we're in him, we're seated with him. The Bible says so. It also says he put all things under his feet. So if we're in Christ, somebody say, I'm a little toe. That's all right. You're still above him. Hello. Uh, now I'm getting off subject. Let me get back on the subject. We, we can, in the name of Jesus, we have the power to speak to demons and drive them out. We speak with tongues, according to Acts chapter 2, verse number 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, a lot of people... Uh, <laughs> I deal with them, and, and you, you notice I like to just talk to people and get them filled right here in front. Remember what? Three or four Sundays ago, we had, what, four people get filled whole, just like that. And, and uh, some people say to me, say, well, you explain it so differently. Well, it, it says they spoke. And I tell the people, hey, it's going to sound like you want to say something that's not English. Now, to your mind, it sounds crazy, but just go ahead and do it anyway. And the more you do it, the more fluent you become. How many of you found out, and the more you pray in the Spirit, how many of you found out the more fluent it becomes? It's just like anything else. The more you do something, the more easier it becomes. To, it becomes. Am I right or wrong? And the reason some people have a problem praying in the Spirit is because they don't do it very much. But we should be doing it every day. I'm off the subject again. <laughs> That's good teaching. I'm not going to take it back. Amen. You know, I want to draw your attention to the power in the name of Jesus today. There's power when you say that name. At the mention of that name, difficult situations can be brought to naught. At the power of that name, peace settles in in the midst of a storm. Repeating the name of Jesus several times. I want this whole congregation, I want you to say, Jesus. 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 You notice there's something begins to happen when that name is spoken. I know many years ago, back about, I don't know, 64, I think. No, no it would have been uh, about 68. I was associate pastor with my father-in-law down there in Garland, and we rented the North Mesquite High School auditorium, and, we, and uh, Andre Cross was just getting started at that time. And he, we had him come in, do a big youth rally deal, and... Uh, he was talking about that for some reason or another, he, he got on a program at some kind of rock deal, and uh, he thought, what in the world am I going to do? I got to go up behind <laughs> these rock groups. And, and so he said he just sat, sat out the piano, and he just began to run some arpeggios up and down the keyboard, and he just began to say under his breath, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said it about four or five times. He said that whole crowd that would have been jumping and going on, they just all of a sudden just hush fell on them. That's the power of the name of Jesus. Then he sang to them and he said, anybody that's interested in finding out about this Jesus, meet me behind stage. I think he had about 500 kids come back there, you know. That was, he was telling that at that deal. And, and uh, you know, 
many of you have heard me tell my story of whenever my motorcycle, when I was in the Army, was sliding toward a thousand foot drop off. I didn't have time to have, call a prayer meeting. I didn't have time, there were no cell phones then anyway, but I didn't have time to call every prayer line in the country. In fact, in the natural, I'm sliding, I'm kicking gears and kicking the ground, trying, because that bike is sliding. And uh, I just hollered three times, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the next thing I know, I hit the middle of the road and the, the bike tire, and I ran up on the side, of the mountain and back down and I was just sitting in the middle of the road. And by that, you know, by that time, reality had set in and I realized, and all the guys, I was riding the, I, I was riding the smallest bike of all of them. I had a 150 Honda, 150 Honda Dream and uh, I think there was two of them had a, had a, a 1967 Triumph Bonnevilles and one guy had an old BSA 500 one lung. If you've never, if you don't know nothing about a BSA, they, they, have, they have one piston. It's about that big around, 500, has about that big around, and it is huge. And then I, I think it was a 250 Honda Scrambler, and, and I don't know how many bikes. But I, and I, I had, I mean, we, I was doing the best job I could to keep up, and I was on the rear, and I had it wide open trying to stay up with them because they, they had more horses than I did. And they realized that I wasn't there, so they all turned around and come back. And uh, you could see where the broad side of that tire slid right to the edge. And one old boy said, man, the knobs on the edge of your tire caught and throwed you back up on the road. I said, no. Nah. I said, didn't have nothing to do with it. I said, God is the one that did it. Hello? I know my daughter back whenever, back in a couple winters ago when we had a real bad winter, I think it was, she was going home here from the office, and all of a sudden, a car started sliding on the ice, and it was headed straight far, far, and she just said, Jesus, Jesus, and the car, it was going straight far, and all of a sudden, for no reason at all, it just went over in the ditch. I mean, it was sliding straight, and then it just goes like this. Somebody said, oh, man, you was lucky. Luck didn't have nothing to do with it. How many times have you had somebody say to you, boy, you're lucky, and you, you knew in your own heart, luck didn't have anything to do with it. It was the power in the name of Jesus. Say it with me. There's power in the name of Jesus. If you've ever done any traveling, you've had to deal with custom agents in foreign countries. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That can be a hectic experience. Anybody ever been there whenever they just got to screaming at one another and people were screaming and going on. It, it become chaotic. Anybody ever been in one of those situations at the customs? Yeah, here's one right here. Here's at the customs. I mean, it can get chaotic. And I was there one time and it got chaotic. I mean, you know, people were screaming and, and I couldn't understand anything anybody was saying anyway. Cause it, and, it was a, and I just, I just said, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And all of a sudden, it just got quiet. And the custom agents that was all upset, they were yelling at one another. And the people were yelling and suitcases was open. All of a sudden, he, they just started slamming suitcases together and just waving people through and they wasn't even checking nothing. <laughs> I'm serious. See, when the presence of danger is there, you have a right to control some things. You can control the atmosphere. Now, you can't control people, and you can't control, but when your personal safety is involved, you have a right to control the situation. How I many through the name of Jesus, power in the name of Jesus? See, me, from my book, Je Jesus' Name Above All Names, where I'm getting most of this from, and uh, here's a statement from page 16. Many of us don't fully realize the protecting power that there is in the name of Jesus, but that same power is available for us today. Power in the name of Jesus to change situations. Power in the name of Jesus to bring peace when you're all tore up. You know, right in the middle of oppression, 
right in the middle of grief, right in the middle uh, of, of the worst situation that you can even think about, you can begin to call on the name of Jesus because he's the Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. In fact, he said in the word, my peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. So we should not be in turmoil, but we should be in peace because he left peace with us. Now, I didn't say that we weren't going to face situations. I didn't say that we weren't going to have trouble. But in the middle of that, you can have peace because he has given us peace. You can use the name of Jesus for your benefit. It belongs to you. Nothing can withstand the name of Jesus. We can walk in victory. Lack and poverty came. Demon power came. No situation, no circumstance can stand against the power of the name of Jesus. Everything has to bow to the name of Jesus and come under subjection at the mention of that name. You know, we used to sing a song. He's as close as the mention of his name. Anybody remember that song? He's as close as the mention of his name. Philippians 2, 9 and 10 says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Everything bows to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I just reminded these people for a few moments today about the power in the name of Jesus. Help us to realize that that power is available for us at all times. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's actually becoming more urgent that all of us know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Yes. Uh, you know, because it, it, without Him, there is no hope. But with Christ, the yes. Word of God said there's hope. Yes. And you know, I, I want to talk to you for just a minute. If you have never, ever accepted Christ as your personal Savior, or if you know what it is to serve Christ, but you know you're not where you're supposed to be and you just need to, need to rededicate. Or if you're like a lot of people that I meet, they go to church, but they don't know whether they've ever really accepted Christ or not. So I want to ask you to pray this prayer with me. Re repeat it after me with Miss Lynette right now. At, all right, are you ready? Every one of you that need to accept Christ, you need to rededicate your life. You just, have, you just need a no-so experience with God. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I thank you for your son, Jesus. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he's the son of God. I believe he died for my salvation. I believe he died for my salvation. I believe he rose again. I believe he rose again. And I believe he's seated in heavenly places with you right now. And I believe he's seated in heavenly places with you right now. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. That the Word says. That the Word says. That if I would believe in my heart. That if I would believe in my heart. And confess with my mouth. And confess with my mouth. The Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus. I would be saved. I would be saved. You have heard me confess with my mouth. You've heard me confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. And I thank you now. And I thank you now. That I'm a new person in Christ Jesus. That I'm a new person in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer with us, would you just uh, write us at uh, rhema.org and let us know about it? And, or you can write partner services at rhema.org. Yes. And we'll get the information. We want to hear from you. You know, hon, uh, people may not know it, but on, on at Raymond.org we have an area called the Study Center. Yes. And there are many articles there on prayer and healing and faith and finances mm -hmm. and even how to how to have Christian living, quality right. of Christian forgiveness, and oh, many many more mm -hmm. things that are there. So uh, just go there to the study center and and read those. It it will help you in your life. And you know, 
as as we're here and as we're we're thinking about prayer you know, Do you have one last word you'd like to say? Yes, honey. You know, at the beginning of the program, we were talking about safety one of the times. Yes. And I was just thinking about, I just felt like I needed to just give this example that sometimes, you know, this may happen to you and you need, need to obey the spirit on the inside of you. I was actually several months ago uh, attending the movie War Room. Yeah. with a friend of mine that was in yeah. town and we went uh, and we went to watch that and all of a sudden as we were in the studio I mean you know the theater I, the theater, the theater um, all of a sudden on the inside the Lord just said pray for safety and so I turned to my friend and I said you know just grab my hand we're going to just quietly pray for safety I didn't look around to see if there was somebody with a gun oh, or yeah. anything you know but we just said thank you father we claim the 91st Psalm that we are safe yes and um, you know I and when the spirit prompts you to do that oh, you yes, need you to need do to it do don't it. question it but just do it uh, anytime that I'm going to I, you know my grandson races and and then the other boys play ball and we go anytime I'm going to a, an event and I, I pray at the at the Chili Bowl here in Tulsa which is the largest midget car race in the world anytime I'm going to any big event like that I always pray for safety yes. because yes. It, it, you just need to do that that's right in, in fact uh, you and I, because you you have said to me, and when we hear of a uh, uh, big uh, ball games, yeah. uh, parades, and yes. different things, uh, we, will we will pray for pray the safety of, of those the of, of the people there. That's right. And we're not even there, but uh, see, that's what prayer does. Prayer changes things. That's right. Prayer changes things. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the program today, and I want to thank you for helping us to bring hope, hope help, help, and, and healing. healing. To the world. This month, you can get all four of these in depth question and answer study courses of the scriptures by Kenneth E. Hagan. The Bible Faith Study Course takes you through the Bible to teach you how faith is produced and how to release it in your life. The Holy Spirit and His Gifts Study Course helps you learn about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and how they operate. The Bible Prayer Study Course teaches you from the Word how to pray effectively and receive answers. And the Bible Healing Study Course provides scriptural proof that it is God's will to heal you. All four study books are available now for only $45.40. Call toll-free 888-PRAISE-8 or log on at rhema.org anytime, day or night to order. Call today. Thank you for watching Rama Praise with Ken and Lynette Hagen. Ken, Lynette, and Rama Bible Training College are committed to reaching the entire world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and training laborers for the end time harvest. If you have prayer requests or would like more information, please write, call, or visit our website. Thank you for being with us today and for your faithful support. And remember, there is hope, help, and healing for a hurting world.